Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. I wanted to talk to you today about something that's been on my mind. And I'll be honest with you, the first time I heard it, it didn't sit horses with me. I didn't much appreciate it. I knew it was a wrong statement. It registered, but I, I didn't address it. First time I heard somebody say this. The second time I heard somebody, well, actually, I didn't hear them. They left it as a comment on one of my videos. And I realized this is blasphemy against the Lord. I still had to meditate on it a little while longer because it, it, you know, it pushed that button when somebody makes, you know, the, that ain't right kind of thing. And I started meditating on what was not right about the statement, which I'll share with you in a minute. But I was actually aghast when the person said it because I'm like, how can you say that? without trembling or typing and I said that's because they don't respect and reverence the Lord Jesus Christ now people pay lip service to the Lord you ask them if they believe Jesus is God they'll say yes but then they'll still say stuff like this here's the statement I believe the whole Bible, not just the red letter words of Jesus. Now on his face, to the religious, it sounds correct. But that is absolute blasphemy against the Lord. I want you to think about this for a second and I'm going to prove it to you in the scripture and today I'm not like on the fly a lot of times I just talk about stuff on the fly this time I went and got the scriptures up so I could show you that that the word of God repudiates that statement and condemns that statement because you do realize that Genesis where the Bible says In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said that that's not the only time God says something, right? And throughout the Old Covenant, all of the times that you see where it says the Lord said, is not the only time he said something. You do realize that in the New Testament. The Lord said some things too. Right? But there is a distinction in the New Covenant. Versus the Old. First of all. That is the New Covenant. And the Bible says. Speaking of the new covenant, we have a new and better covenant. And as I've said before, and I'll say again, new is always new and better is always better. Now, getting back to that statement, I believe the whole Bible not just the red letter words of Jesus. Just is a reduction. The word just, I'm not using it in, in the form of the word for justice, as in something is just as in upright, because that's not how they were using it. After a little research, I discovered 
the way that they're using the word is called an idiom. Those two words together, not just, according to Merriam-Webster, I'm looking at the online dictionary. It says not just as an idiom. It is used to say that one thing is true and that another thing is also true. Now, no doubt that def definition is correct, but here's the problem. What, what they are doing when they make this statement is to bring certain things up to the level of the Lord Jesus Christ that has no place being there. For example, you and I, even though we are the righteousness of God, and that is His imputed righteousness, not our own, that we have received by faith in Christ and received His justification. We are not equal to the Lord. I hope nobody has a problem with that statement. He is God Almighty. And as good as I am on my best day, I ain't nowhere near being God Almighty. And neither are you. And let me help you. Not there was any el one else in that old covenant. None of the prophets. None of them. Just men. Men of God. Not God manifested in the flesh. No, they were not. So the statement here that is used in the sentence, I think is a pretty good example here, where it shows, as it says here for the definition of the idiom, not just, that is used to say that one thing is true and that another thing is also true. The, the sentence that's used as an example is, she's not just my friend, she's my lawyer. But see how it brings both of those together as equal? She's not just my friend. Because the just my friend would be a reduction. But what they're saying is, no, she's my lawyer. So they're bringing it up that she's my friend and my lawyer. The problem is what you do when you, when you do this or use this idiom, the way that people have used it and said, I believe the whole Bible not just the red letter words of Jesus. They are elevating the law and the prophets. I would argue, they're even trying to put it above the Lord, but they brought him equal with that. But that ain't what the Bible teaches. Here we go. In the Gospel of John, the fifth chapter, I'm going to start at verse 20. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raised up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, 
honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Next verse, First John four fourteen, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Who shall ever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God? God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So we see whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Now I want to go to Matthew chapter 17. And I'm going to start at verse 1. Now again, I'm talking about how they want to bring Jesus and the prophets because that's what the Old Covenant was mostly written by, right? The prophets and the lawgiver, Moses. And I'm going to show you something that's right here in this scripture to show you that Jesus is not on the same level. When they say, I believe the whole word of God, not just the red letter words of Jesus. It is a reduction of our Lord. Watch this. Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then Peter answered and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him and when the disciples heard it they fell on their face and were sore afraid and Jesus came and touched them and said arise and be not afraid and when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man, save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man, until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Now, 
You see a co several things here. This is not an accident that this is in the scripture. Because the Lord knew there was coming a day that people were going to try to esteem the law and the prophets above his son. The father knew this. And the son is here in this example. And the Lord shows you that his son is above the law and the prophets. Moses is a picture of the law. Elias is a picture of the prophets. And the father who spoke from heaven said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He didn't say, Here, Moses. He didn't say, Here, Elijah. Elias. He didn't say, Here, both Moses and Elias. He said, Hear ye him. Speaking of Jesus, esteeming the Lord Jesus Christ over the law. And the prophets. Now you also see that when the disciples fell down, fell on their face, and they were afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man. So they no longer see Moses and Elias. And it says, Save Jesus only. That's not an accident that's phrased and spoken that way either. Or written that way because Jesus is the one who we're supposed to listen to. He is not on the same level with the law and the prophets. Let's continue. Hebrews chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by who? His son whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, not just the earth, the worlds, however that works out to be, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, of whose person, of whose glory, the Father's, and of holding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Beloved, people don't realize sometimes, I don't think, some of the things they say out of their mouth. They're trying to, I don't know, I don't know what they're trying to do. But we got to be careful what we say. Because to reduce Jesus down on the same level as the law and the prophets, that's not a good thing. He is above. Now he'll never contradict, but he is above. We ought to be studying the red -led -led words of Jesus like we done lost our mind. Because they are the words of the living God. And if you remember, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth. Was it forth or out of the mouth of God? Let me pull that one up real quick. I wonder if people that say that because when the, when this person wrote that, and I heard this for like the second time within two or three weeks, I was like, wait a minute, that ain't right. 
I didn't like it the first time I heard it, and I doubly don't like it now that I've heard it again. Because it is a reduction, subtly, an attack on the deity of our Lord. Matthew 4, verse 4, Jesus is answering the serpent, the devil, and he says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Who is Jesus? God manifested in the flesh. So either these people do not believe that Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. Or they don't realize what they're saying. Nobody trumps the Lord. He and the Father are one. So anything he says the Father is already in agreement with or he wouldn't be saying it. So let's be careful, y'all, not to uh, confuse Jesus. He is not on the same level with any other man, the, the lawgiver or the prophets. We just saw that in the scripture. The father declared. Continuing in Hebrews. Verse 5 of chapter 1. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to him a father. And he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he saith, whom maketh his angels spirits and his ministers of flame of fire. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. And thou, O Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. This is all speaking of Jesus. Verse 11. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. This is a complete repudiation of that mess Jehovah Witnesses used to teach back in the day that Jesus was an angel. Complete repudiation right here in their Bible. If they read it. Or if they didn't take it out. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister? Sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Therefore. Uh, chapter 2 verse 1. And as I used to hear one preacher say, he said, whenever there's a therefore, you need to find out what the therefore is therefore. Well, the therefore was everything we just read. And now it's saying, now it's laid that foundation on Jesus is God. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things of we, which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoke, spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received is a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord 
and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. That heard who? That heard him. Just like when the Bible said, where I just showed you, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And here it is saying that again in verse 3 of Hebrews chapter 2. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Beloved. It is a subtle attack on the Lord Jesus Christ to make a statement, to use the idiom. I believe the whole Bible, not just the word, the red letter words of Jesus. I hope I showed that to you plainly. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God. In the mighty name of King Jesus, amen.